Alright, so this is going to be part two of this series. Um, now, the next part is obviously to program our EEPROM. So this way, when we give it in hours or minutes, um, it can display that current time um, in an actual decimal format, or the hexadecimal format. So to do that, we're going to be using a computer. Arduino libraries on the computer to program this Fuberino SD, which is compatible with Arduino. And we're going to be programming the EEPROM using that. So all we have to do is type in some code, um, put it through a for loop, and it'll go ahead and program it. Now, I've already gone through the process of programming this chip, but it's pretty easy. So let me just go ahead and give this power, and we can go ahead and check our values. Hopefully these numbers are not too blown out for you guys. Um, but it should be showing zero, 0, And let me explain quickly how these control lines work. So these three lines on the rightmost edge are the control lines for the EEPROM. So I think this is like write enable, um, chip enable, and output enable. And I have those tides tied to the corresponding highs or lows that they need to be in order for this EEPROM to be working in the output stage. Um, now these lines here, these 11 wires, are going to be our address lines. They're going to represent a0 through A10. Um, now because we only need 8 bits, we're only going to be using A0 through A7 for the timestamp. So to tell the EEPROM what time we're currently at, we're only going to be using A0 and A7. But we have two displays here. One is going to be corresponding to the hours and one is going to be corresponding to the minutes. So we need a ninth bit, which is going to be address pin 8. And that is going to tell it whether we're just currently displaying the um, minutes or currently displaying the hours right now. Now I have both of these displays tied together because the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be because these displays are common anode displays we're going to be choosing which of these displays connects to power at a certain time and we're going to be flashing through them really quickly in the same process that we did the 8-bit CPU. Now a high on address pin 8 corresponds to showing the minutes and a low on address pin 8 corresponds to showing the hours. Alright, we're back to zero there. Let's just pick something random here. Ones. Alright, so this is going to be between four minutes and eight minutes of whatever hour. And we can find out what hour it is by changing the pin. So it's three o'clock. So it's between 304 and 308. That's the time that we have corresponding to this current address, which is, I believe, the last five bits all one and the first three all zero. So this is sort of a sneak peek at what the finished build is going to be like by the end of the video. So we need to explain how we got there. Now I don't want to be showing programming in this, so we're just going to, I'm going to somehow share my code with you guys, whether it be in the description or I'll upload the file or something, so you guys can copy the code and take a look at it for yourselves. But we're going to be mainly focusing on the hardware today. So this is the circuit that we had left over from the last video. Now this is a new portion that you guys haven't seen before. So this is our 555 timer that's going to give us all of our minutes. The value of the last 8 bits here is going to change every 4 minutes. You can see that, I don't remember if I had this JK flip-flop in the last video, but we've got it now. So the JK flip-flop uses um, the clock pin on the JK flip-flop for the first, because there's two in each one. So the first JK flip-flop, the clock pin corresponds to the 8th bit that comes from the up-down counter and that gives us our ninth bit. Then the ninth bit goes in to the clock signal of the second JK flip-flop, and that gives us our tenth bit here. These ten are going to be our data values for the time. Now the one, we need one more 555 timer as well, and this timer, which is down here, is going to be an extraordinarily fast timer, one that we probably won't be able to even see is on or off, but it'll be switching very rapidly between on and off, and that will plug in to our EEPROM over here. It'll plug into this a address pin 8 to our EEPROM, and that'll flash through these the hours and the minutes, and we'll also tie that to the uh, anodes of our display so this way when it's a zero, when the A8 is a zero, which means the hours minute, this display is going to be on, and when A8 is a one, this display is going to be on, and this display is going to be off. So the first step there is to create the 555 timer, 
and it's just like exactly how we create a 555 timer in this right here. So we can just go ahead and copy that circuit essentially and change the values. And the good thing about this is it doesn't really matter what the values are because it just needs to be so fast that when you plug it into the EEPROM, you can't see the value flashing. So, you, so if you do see the value flashing, then you just want to decrease the resistance or decrease the capacitor until um, you can't see it flashing anymore. Um, so what I have here is, I think this is a 0.22 microfarad capacitor, and it's charging through a 1K and 10K resistor, um, and it's discharging through the 10K resistor. So if we go ahead and give this power, you can see that this is on all the time. It looks like this LED is just stably on, that's on all the time, but that's actually not true. It's not on all the time, it's just flashing so fast that it looks like it's on all the time. Now, we need one more thing for this, which is why I have this other chip here, the JK flip-flop. Let me get a piece of paper, actually. So, this is the hours, and this is the minutes. Okay, so we have two displays here, which we're just going to call a single LED right now. This is the hours, and this is the minutes, and this is the EEPROM. What we want is, when there's a zero here, going. we're just talking about the address pin 8 right now, okay? Um, when there's a zero here, that means that we're talking about the hours, and we want this connected to 5 volts. This is automatically going to be connected to ground because we're talking about a common anode display. And when this is a 1, we want this one connected to 5 volts. The minutes one is easy. The minutes can be directly connected just to address pin 8 on the EEPROM because when the fast clock signal goes high, then address pin 8 is going to be high, and the common anode display for the minutes is going to be high. That's easy. Now for the hours, it's a little bit tricky, because when there's a zero here, we need a one here. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could put a not gate coming from the clock signal and connect that to the hours, and that would completely solve the problem. Um, unfortunately, I don't have not gate, so I had to improvise. And the way we're going to do this is with a JK flip-flop. And we're going to do this with a JK flip-flop because, as you can see, if I just isolate one of these, you get a, a Q not and you get a Q. So that means that this is going to be the inverse of this signal automatically. So it's like a NOT gate. It's got a NOT gate built in. So all we have to do is connect our fast clock signal. So all we have to do is connect our fast clock signal to the clock signal of our JK flip-flop, tie J and K high so that we get the toggling function. Um, and then we connect Q not to the hours, and we connect Q to the minutes and to address pin 8. Now, of course, there's going to be one side effect, which is that the clock signal is going to be um, halved, meaning that whatever the fast clock signal is here, the actual rate at which these two values change is going to be half of that rate. And that's really not a big deal because that means that we can just improve, because we don't really care about the speed of this fast clock signal other than it's fast, we can just make it a little bit faster so that this way times two doesn't really make too much difference. You can go ahead and do that now. So first we can tie our power lines together. So the first thing is to connect this pin here, address pin eight, up to our Q signal from the JK flip-flop. You can see I already have the JK flip-flop in the proper court, um, configuration. The J and K are tied high, and the clock signal is connected to the output of the 555 timer. So connect that pin up to this one, and then the Q naught can be connected to our hours display, which you can see is up here. And then lastly, we want this pin to also be connected to the minutes display. So that's connected together. You can get rid of this. You can go ahead and give the circuit power. And you can see that we get two different numbers out now. Okay, hopefully that's better. But you can see that we get two different numbers out here. We get three and a one. So that means that the current time for whatever address pins we've got here is currently 304 to 308. Um, and we can go ahead and give it a different time. Let's just for fun go ahead and go to all zeros. And that'll be 1 a.m. Well, between 1 a.m. and 104 a.m. Or p.m. because this is a 12-hour 12, uh, 12 clock. And you can see that pretty much any time works here. Now there is one problem, and I'll demonstrate that by going to our maximum time. Now our maximum time should be 180, whatever 180 is in decimal format, um, in binary format. 
because remember we did 12 by 15 so that means 180 possible combinations so if we go to the digit 180 we should get our maximum time value or technically we should go to 179 this is number 179 in binary 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 um, and we get C E now C is the digit 12 and E corresponds to the time 56 to 60 which is basically between 12.56 and 1 a.m. now you can see that if we go one over let's go one more instead of going back to one we get C 0 which makes no sense and the reason for this is because it's not technically programmed we only program the addresses 0 to 179 and we're past we're technically at 180 right now is our current address so we're just getting something sort of random now this is a problem because our binary counter is just going to keep counting it's just going to go once it hits 180 it's just once once it hits 179 once it hits 179 it's just going to go to 180 and then 181 and 182 so that means after 12 hours that this thing is basically going to be completely useless it's, the time is going to be total junk so what we need to do is have a reset function in the hardware a reset function would mean that we know when these bits get to 179 the binary value of this gets to 179 and once it hits 179 we clear this and we clear that so this way it resets to zero and we get back to one o'clock now this requires a little bit of extra hardware and this is the future direction that I'm talking about this is what we're going to discuss in the next video now the way we're going to be doing this is with two four-bit selector or decoder I see sorry now because we got 8 bits, we need two 4-bit ones. So this one's probably going to correspond to the last 4 bits. This one's going to correspond to the first 4 bits of the 8-bit address that goes into this machine. And when it gets to the specific one, that is 180, one of these pins, um, one of these pins is going to be high and w the rest of them are all going to be low. And so we can just AND those together with an AND gate we can have this go to the clear function so that this way when it gets to a certain bit value we can AND it and know that it's at that bit value and then we can go ahead and clear these two up down counters and clear this JK flip flop and hopefully everything will go back to zero now that is going to be in the future so that's going to be the next video hopefully and when that's done um, there shouldn't be anything wrong with uh, this clock anymore I think that's pretty much it I think this will be finished by then so, uh, go ahead and like this video if you liked it, um, subscribe if you want to see what's coming up next, um, other than that, I'll just see you guys in the next one.